Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wuryawan and today we're going to talk about wide-angle portrait photography using Micro Four Tens camera. Let's go! So, in today's video, I want to share my general philosophy when it comes to wide-angle portrait photography what it is and why you should use wide angle lenses for taking portraits and then i'm also going to share the benefit of using micro four thirds camera for wide angle portrait photography in particular and then also i will share my favorite lenses to use for wide angle portrait and the sample picture so that you can better understand what these lenses can do when it comes to wide angle portrait photography First, let's talk about portrait photography in general. Many people will usually choose telephoto lenses for portrait photography because they will produce flattering result and also with the longer focal lengths, they can produce more background blur or bokeh and that's always been the standard when it comes to portrait photography. So lenses uh, like this Panasonic 35 to 100 mm f2.8, which is like the 70 to 200 mm in full frame, or the Olympus 75 mm f1.8, or the Olympus 45 mm f1.8. That has always been the standard lenses in micro photos when it comes to portrait photography. Anyway, you wanna check out more about the comparison between these lenses, I will put the link up here. But today, I don't wanna talk about the standard kind of uh, thinking when it comes to portrait photography. I wanna introduce you to the concept of wide angle portrait photography. So with wide angle portrait photography, Obviously, we are not going to use these telephoto lenses. We are going to use normal wide angle kind of lenses or even ultra wide angle lenses to capture our subject and make it into a portrait. And yes, that means we will run into some risk like distortion and also lack of background blur. But wide angle portrait photography will provide you with one thing that is very important and I want you to remember this word carefully, and that word is context. With wide angle portrait, you'll be able to provide context by not turning your background into total blur so that you can learn about the place, about the time, more from the picture, rather than just looking at nice blurry bokeh background. I personally think this is very important, especially for travel. When you are traveling, you don't want to turn that context into total background blur. You want to be able to remember the place, the time where you took the portrait, so that you can recall any memories or stories related to that particular picture or to that particular trip. And that is the goal with wide angle portrait photography. Now, some of you guys who follow my channel might already know that I'm a big fan of Micro Four Thirds camera system. And when it comes to wide angle portrait photography, I think Micro Four Thirds has an advantage, especially when it comes to providing context. Because of the smaller sensor of the Micro Four Thirds camera, you'll be able to get a lot more context even if you are using large aperture lenses. And I think that is a benefit not a disadvantage when it comes to wide angle portrait photography. Now that you have learned about the basic concepts of wide angle portrait photography, I wanna give you a list of some lenses that I personally use a lot for wide angle portrait photography with micro four thirds camera. First lens is not really a lens, but a category. I'm calling it ultra wide angle lenses. That could be my personal favorite, the Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 mm f2.8 to f4, or the Lawa 7.5 mm f2, or whatever other lens that you have. Maybe you have the Olympus 8 to 25 mm f4, or Olympus 7 to 14 mm f2.8. Those are all valid options for this particular category. I'm going to pick the 8 to 18 mm lens right here for the uh, example for this particular category. So the Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 millimeter f2.8 to f4 can go to a really extreme wide angle, ultra wide angle focal length at eight millimeter, 
but this is a zoom lens so you can zoom it to 18 millimeter for a normal moderate wide angle kind of focal length not really the extreme anymore and the aperture goes to f 2.8 if you zoom out to 8 millimeter but once you start zooming in at 18 millimeter you're getting f4 maximum aperture anyway with the f 2.8 aperture at 8 millimeter it won't give you a lot of bokeh because this is an ultra wide angle lens but you'll get that a uh, lower light performance and just overall ability to crank up your shutter speed without raising your ISO if you need to. So while I'm talking right now, I will provide you with some sample pictures taken using the 8 to 18 millimeter lens. But basically, you will choose this lens if you have a beautiful white scenery. Imagine a beautiful landscape photographs, but you want to put your daughter or your son or maybe your spouse into the frame together with the landscape and create a beautiful wide angle portrait i think this is the best choice for that kind of stuff as you can see on some of my sample pictures however because this is an ultra wide angle lens you have to be very careful not to put your subject a little bit to the edge of the frame you have to keep them centered to avoid any kind of weird distortion with this lens Lately, ultra wide angle kind of portrait is also very popular in social media, in TikTok, in Instagram, and definitely with this lens at 8 mm you can get that kind of look as well. Well, maybe it's not for everyone. I'm not really into ultra wide angle portrait anyway. I'm more into normal wide angle portrait as I will explain later. But if you need that effect, then this lens can provide you with that. Anyway, if you don't like it, this is still a zoom lens, so you can zoom it to 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, or 18 millimeter to get that normal wide kind of portrait. In other words, if you require the maximum amount of contacts, then you will choose the ultra wide angle lenses like the Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 millimeter. Next lens is my new personal favorite for wide angle portrait photography, and that is the Panasonic Lumix 14 millimeter f 2.5 this guy right here this is quite a new lens i made a review about this lens uh, maybe a few days ago you might want to check out that review up here but basically with this lens the combination of the f 2.5 aperture together with the 14 millimeter focal length will give you a nice perfect balance between the background blur and the context and that's why this is such a really nice lens for wide angle portrait photography. With this particular lens, you can kind of control the amount of context in your picture. If you want more context, just put your subject a little bit further away from the camera and you'll get more context. If you want more background blur and less context, you can put your subject closer to the camera and it will produce more background blur. Some bonus points of using this lens for wide angle portrait is that this lens is very small, it's a pancake lens, it's very lightweight, it's easy to carry around, and the result is very sharp, very contrasty, and it produces nice kind of vibe for wide angle portrait photography. The only drawback of using this lens is the fact that uh, this lens has a little bit of that business going on in the background blur. You can still see some textures, you can still see some sharpness in the background blur, but it's not a big deal for me, and I think you will be happy using this lens for wide angle portrait photography. If you want something better than the 14mm f2.5, something with slightly better optical performance, with slightly larger aperture, consider the Panasonic Leica, 15 millimeter f 1.7 this lens that's currently recording this video right now it has a little bit more background blur as you can see this is the kind of background blur that this lens can produce and you can see the kind of focal lengths that it can give you the field of view in this video right now i also use this lens a lot for wide angle portrait photography and i think the result coming out from this lens is always satisfactory as I mentioned before, you'll get some improvements when compared to the 14mm f2.5 and I'm sure you'll be happy with the result taken using this lens as well. Next lens is the Panasonic Lumix 20mm f1.7. 
So technically, this lens is no longer categorized as wide angle lens anymore. But for portrait photography, this is still considered wide. As I mentioned before, usually portrait photography is always using telephoto lenses. So with something like this that's closer to a normal field of view, it is still considered wide angle in my opinion. And this is also my personal favorite because the lens is small, lightweight pancake lens like the 14mm f2.5. And the images taken using this lens is always sharp and contrasty and punchy and really nice for wide angle portrait photography as well. At this focal length, 20 millimeter, you'll get less context, definitely. You'll get more background blur. So if that's something that you're really into, or if you're not really accustomed to wide angle portrait photography, then I think this is the correct lens to mitigate that kind of problem. The only drawback of the 20 millimeter f1.7 is the auto focus speed. It's not really that fast. Uh, but it's not sluggish in my opinion, especially compared to some other lenses on different camera formats. I can still use it comfortably. And again, I think you will be happy using this lens for wide angle portrait photography. Alternatively, you can go for more background blur by going to 25 millimeter. There's an Olympus 25 millimeter F1.8 or the Panasonic 25 millimeter F1.7. If you want more context and less background blur, you can go to 17 millimeter F1.8 by Olympus. They also make the 17 millimeter F2.8, but it's a little bit sluggish in autofocus as well, but the result is also nice. So yeah, those are two different kinds of options if you don't really like the 20 millimeter focal length. Last but not least, my choice for wide angle portrait photography is your kit lens, either the 14 to 42 millimeter Olympus lens or the 12 to 32 millimeter Panasonic lens. Yes, you heard me right, kit lens. Who said you cannot use kit lens for portrait photography? The ability to zoom in and zoom out with kit lens makes this lens a perfect portrait lens, not just for wide angle portrait photography, but also portrait photography in general. Just be mindful that because the kit lens usually don't have large aperture, this kit lens in particular is f3.5 at 12 millimeter and f5.6 at 32 millimeter, then you won't get that much background blur, but you'll get a lot of context. So for travel photography, I think it's perfect. And also this lens is very small, very lightweight, very easy to travel around with. And the image quality taken using this lens is always sharp and nice. It's so underrated in my opinion, because usually people will think that kit lens is garbage. No, that is not the case. I really enjoy taking wide angle portrait photography using kit lens. Alternatively, if you want more background blur, then you can always choose a more serious lens like this Olympus 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8, this guy right here. With the f2.8 aperture, even at wider angle focal lengths, you'll get background blur already. And that's always really nice. You can control the balance between context and background blur yourself. If you want more blurry background, open up the aperture to f2.8. If you want more context, close down the aperture, you'll have that option using this lens. However, this lens is definitely much more expensive than the kit lens and also it's bigger and heavier. So maybe it's not as suited for travel as the kit lens, but really it's up to you. You have your own requirements and needs. So everyone is different. For me, I personally prefer the smaller kit lens for travel and the bigger lens for more serious kind of uh, commercial job or like for more serious photography and video gig. And that wraps up today's video. So hopefully by watching this video, you'll be able to learn more about wide angle portrait photography, especially using micro photos camera and also to learn more about the lenses that I just mentioned, what kind of pictures that they can produce and see whether they are the right lenses for you or not. So that is all for today's video. I hope that this video has been useful, informative and inspiring for you. Please comment down below what is your favorite lens for wide angle portrait photography. 
Also, don't forget to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, subscribing to my channel down below. And if you want to support my channel even further, consider using the affiliate links on the description below or using the super thanks button. Thank you and see you on the next video. Goodbye.